You are tuned to KPFA and KPFB in Berkeley and KFCF in Fresno. Listener-sponsored radio started in 1949 by pacifists, also online at kpfa.org. Well, we have a special guest on the phone. Let's see if I can make this happen. Can you hear me, Professor? Thomas, are we there? Yes, we're on the air. Uh, wonderful, wonderful to be here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, you you are involved with an urban legend that is evolving and becoming something more wonderful. Tell us what's going <laughs> on. Well, I kind of like to think of it as the evolution of an American film classic. I, I can... We're speaking of an urban legend, number one. I'm going to try to be really condensed in this because it can be a long, convoluted conversation when I get into the specifics. But we've all heard somewhere about the urban legend of the dark side of the moon being played against the Wizard of Oz. And most people, when I ask that question, they kind of go, no, I don't know. But when I mention those two subjects, they go, oh, yeah, I've heard that. And uh, so I, I became part of a group that, that was part of the discovery of this around 1995. Uh, and the whole user group developed out of a user net uh, to support uh, basically this finding and, and more the study of synchronicity in general. And this was a, a, a group of people referred to as the Synchronicity Archive, founded by a Michael Johnston. Um, and he was one of the ones who first got interviewed by MTV, which broke the story uh, with the help of an article that was also written by a man named Charles Savage, uh, and it was printed in the Fort Wayne Journal Gazette. This whole thing all kind of came together and broke this whole story of this possibility of, of these two meetings happening and, and obviously made people wonder, was this actually done on purpose? Did Pink Floyd actually cut the dark side of the moon to match the Wizard of Oz? Uh, and started conversations to support that theory pro and con, um, and that's what created an urban legend. That's the amazing thing. So when I say it actually is an evolution of American film classic, it truly is. It's not just a, a dry book on a shelf. It, it actually now has been given uh, a life, a breath, and it continues to evolve. And I'm, I'm a, one of a group of people who are kind of continuing to do that. Uh, and um, it's really a fun, fun exploration. And I've been lucky to bring a, a group of people along with me, uh, viewers. I, I refer to people as students. Uh, I, I guess I have the, the professor of psychology. So, so I, I hold classrooms. I just had my first online class tonight. So it's amazing and synchronistic that, that we're having this conversation online with your, your radio friends here. And on the same night that I had done this, what I call the wall reveal assignment. Well, we are speaking with Randy Tiford who is a lifelong audio engineer of uh, mixing many live musical acts in the Bay Area and um, also known as the professor in regard to these um, viral media art uh, <laughs> creations. It's hard, and, it's and, hard to pinpoint what I do. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> and, and I have been to your Dark Side of Oz Yes. Incredible. Yes. Um, so what you see is you see the the Wizard of Oz and you hear the Pink Floyd, Dark Side yes. of the Moon. And then you have carefully put um, an, a strip of footnotes on the bottom <laughs> of, the, of the screen so that you don't miss any of these unbelievable synchronicities. How many are there? In the film, <laughs> to count? yeah. Well, I'll have to say that I actually I have a new number now because because the center, the wall reveal that I did this special assignment for tonight is actually revealing the center of the movie. Uh, and I, I everything I think about it, 130 that I that I noted, and they're they're all now footnoted in the entire movie we'll see this year. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more where and when and all that a little bit on, on where it is, uh, but. Um, it, it, it's really evolved into a really fun process that I can that I can take to show people. Uh, can yeah. you can you give us a, a few examples for people who have not experienced the dark side of Oz? <laughs> sure, of course. Uh, well, the, the urban legend basically reads when you play the uh, the 
Dark Side of the Moon against The Wizard of Oz, and you start The Dark Side of the Moon on the third lion roar of the MGM grand title, and let those two roll, listening to Dark Side of the Moon and not listening to The Wizard of Oz, amazing things happen. And it's true. In the, in the, in the traditional sense of the original thing, the, the Dark Side of the Rainbow, uh, there is nothing but listening to the dark, side, dark Side of the Moon while watching the movie. I've actually taken it a step further and, and taken and edited all the dialogue and sound effects of the movie into the music of Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. Now, it takes roughly two and a half uh, repetitions of the Dark Side of the Moon to equal the length of The Wizard of Oz. So the question has always been asked, what should be in the middle? Does it really need to repeat two and a half times? There's a natural process to that as well. Most people, a lot of us in this group that I speak of, accept that. But I've always thought, I don't like to repeat things. There's there's a middle that's missing, and I have now found that middle. uh, And that's what I'll be previewing. uh, Well, I just previewed it this evening. And I'll be demonstrating at my next show in August 12th in yeah, the Aubergines in Sebastopol. Is it too late to <laughs> join this evening's class? Uh, yes, in, in, the, in the sense that uh, uh, the participation... What I tried to do tonight was, this is a great synchronistic experiment, and I haven't found it anywhere else or anybody else trying to do this. I tried to start, have everybody start the sync that I provided tonight all exactly at 8 o'clock based on their computer time and based on their time zone around the world. I, tonight I had three different people that, that I spoke to and texted back and forth with, different parts of California, one person in Europe and another person in Iceland. So for, for just that one moment at 8 o'clock, we, we all started the same sync all at the same time, freehand, right? We're not, we're not locked together. We're for freehand. And yet we all chatted and, and shared that experience in a chat room alongside the video. So that was pretty amazing to me because because it takes us back to the element of what this really is, hand syncing. Somebody just put this movie against this music, and basically they were doing it in somewhere around 1985 at, at the old Pink Floyd groups in Europe. I have friends who are in London who, who told me this is something that they knew about years and years ago, but it didn't really become an urban legend here until it was mentioned in the story and on the radio and MTV and the Synchronicity Archive and all that. So... It's it's one of, once again it's back to that evolution you know it, it's a it, it's an amazing thing but getting everybody to drop the sink at the same time was really quite an interesting thing because I just knew everybody all at once did this you know and even though I know Iceland I think it was like six hours ahead of me and bless Carl's heart for staying up this late uh, but it was it was really fun to do that well being being the brown nosed student of yours that I am <laughs> I I would have been there but I was busy tonight <laughs> well the information is still is still available to you tonight when, when you when you when you leave you okay go home and find i'll, it I'll and stay up late and and then you'll yes right. and it'll all make sense to you well <laughs> you and, and actually i can say if anybody wants to follow up on this they can go to my website at www.viralmediaart.com and there's a link that'll lead you right over to this uh it'll be available for a few more hours well and also tell us about the other sinks that you do. They're so much fun, so enjoyable. <laughs> I've got a few uh, a few uh, categories I try I try to work with, and it kind of helps me develop sinks for what purpose outside of just the enjoyment of making them. Um, in a nutshell, what I do is I take I take like old movies, 30s, 40s, 50s, or sometimes new ones too if they're funny enough, and and rethink them to other forms of music. Usually dance music. I kind of like to work within the dance realm because there's rhythm involved, and and it really notes the synchronicity that I create. So this is the opposite of what I'm talking about when I talk about a grand sync like the Dark Side of Oz. This is more of a manipulated music video sync. They're just hella fun to make. So I, I have a, a couple of categories that I work with. And one of them is a, a Bollywood. I have a Bollywood TV. And these are these are based out of YouTube stations that I actually run where I have uh, hours and hours of the syncs that I've made taking a classic and, and new Bollywood video and re- relating them to new and Western culture mashups. And by mashups, I mean basically taking two different forms of music, mashing them together, and uh, making that the music track that goes with the Bollywood film. So make it pretty amazing sometimes what can be done. My other other forms are are uh, relating back to some of the classics, you know, the Fred Astaire and 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 uh, Ginger Rogers video stuff. One of my first video syncs was a uh, uh, was a Dark Side of the, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Singing in the Rain with Gene Kelly. 
And I found that Singing in the Rain with Gene Kelly made a perfect match with Billy Idol singing with myself. And I thought, that's just amazing. And that actually made me think uh, that maybe there are many, many more out there available to do. So yeah, how, how how do you go about it? How how do you find these matches? Well, anything is available on on on, on CD, DVD. Uh, you, I, I basically pull pull them apart and and re re sync them. Uh, and the same the same with music and, and the mashup. It, it's a question of how much can I put my art, how much can I make it available to people? Because I'm I'm, take, I'm taking forms and crossing them together and giving them a new life or a new purpose, uh, at the same time tipping, on, tipping around on, on copyright issues, which I'm very well aware of. So, you know, I bet that's the reason for the mashups, because the mashups compute, confuse filters in YouTube. Uh, they don't know what to think of it when it's a Michael Jackson song mixed with a, a Van Halen song or something. And, you know, I, those things make it just more of a gray area to work with it. <laughs> and that's really my artistic form. Uh, I stand under Section 5 of the copyright laws that basically, basically state that it's used for demonstration and, and instructional purposes, which I do. I do a class taught as the professor. And, you uh, are, no you are the pro- oh, so, the, so the, the professor gives you a cover. Well, I wouldn't call it a cover, but you know, for me, it's more of a, it's more of a, of a character to work within. I, I've been mu- involved in music and video my entire life uh, and, and performance art. So, to me, inventing a character gives you kind of a free form to say something you wouldn't normally say, or even do something you wouldn't normally do. So, you well, know, yes, yeah. you know, I I stand I stand by my art. It's an art of technology, and, it, and it's one that's only available because of the state of technology right now. And and that's what drove albums like uh, Dark Side of the Moon to such greatness was because people were taking the technology available and misusing it, generally making mm-hmm. it do things that it wasn't even designed to do. Uh, that's really where the evolution comes from, and that's part of the evolution of, of the American film classic we're, we're talking about. Well, you know, if it wasn't the third growl <laughs> as a sync point... Just slightly, just slightly after the third growl, <laughs> I have found after it. Just slightly. I, believe me, I, I, some people with their, their free time go fishing and hiking, and I like to edit in Oz when I get free time. So, so I've been doing this for about 10 years. I, I've, I've seen every, every single frame. I, and, and notes also, too, in this, that, that I, I do not touch the video whatsoever. The video is unedited and untouched. Uh, and the same with the dialogue. I, I don't move things around to make it look better. It's the natural way these two work together uh, that really make it unbelievable. And when I can go back and pull the dialogue into it and around the forms of music and you see where the the dialogue ends and the guitar solo starts and the, and the whole twister scene is just amazing, isn't it? I mean, oh, no, you've, you've, yeah. you've seen these, you know. I've seen it. Yes. Uh, I love showing this because it, it's just, it's something that you won't necessarily get to see again because it's really not available it, it, other than what I do once a year. And uh, I, it, you know, I love doing something that, that nobody else is doing. There's just a really fun gratification. I, I think I said, and I'm also writing a book. We could talk about that. I'm trying to basically log all this stuff together to get it on stage and get it in print. Uh, and that's my goal since I've supposedly been retired from uh, sound engineering. <laughs> well, you've you've been quite active since your retirement, <laughs> I noticed. Yeah, well, you find anybody who's really retired only has free time to do more things. Yeah. And, and I'm somebody who, who is constantly taking on more things. So I enjoy that. I, you know, that's, that's kind of what I do. So. <laughs> well, the August showing of the Dark Side of Oz. Uh, would would there be another onstage brawl like last year? No, two years ago? no. You see, last year I'm glad you mentioned that because last year that was that was a travesty. Last year I only did that show to come back and and, and prove the people who came the year before. And granted, I've done nine of these now. That the man who did it the year before that wasn't even me. I was off running around the other parts of the country, similar to the music I was listening to actually before uh, um, while I was on hold. And looking for more sinks, and this guy took my show while I wasn't there, set up a tent, occupied Oz on the stage of the Mystic Theater, and, and, and guys said he was me. I came back last year, or I'm sorry, the year before, which you witnessed, and had to take the show back. We had a trial on stage. I, I, I called him as it was, and he tried to escape at the very end. I had to wrestle, <laughs> wrestle the scoundrel down. Uh, it, it's, it, was, it was terrible. It took me a year to get over it before I had to start writing a whole new show. 
fine acting, I must say. <laughs> we, you know, he, Paul, my friend Paul Riley, who, who's gotten this, helped me in, in numbers of these, all the way from riding a wooden a wooden stick horse once, just because I asked him to. It's that kind of friend. He'd drive me to the airport if I asked him to. Uh, you know, these friends, you know, really make it make it wonderful. I, I, I joke about my last one of my last ones because I actually did an Oz Fest saying it wasn't me. But just because we're alone here, I'll, I'll tell you that basically it was me. And, and I did this whole thing where I actually twisted the, the Wizard of Oz all up in the music of Dark Side of the Moon. I actually mixed Ozzy Osbourne into it. And I, I just I just went off on a very fun, hard rock tangent. And people loved it, but it was so... And I had to wear a costume to look like Ozzy. And I put a tent on stage, and inside had all my lighting machines. And there's a lot of visuals that go along with the show, too. You know, it's not just a, a classroom. I, I use that as, a, as my format. But there's a lot of very, very low-tech effects that are <laughs> very, very fun to pull off. And that's my way of working. Very low-tech as much as possible and spend all my time in video editing. So, Professor... Is it true that because of copyright issues, we will never be able to see the dark side of Oz with the sinking, this beautiful you know, thing that you've done? It, 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 is, it is possible as time goes on. Uh, it, things, you know, music and, and things like this are a virus. You know, it's out there. Obviously, it's an urban legend. It's cultural at this point, of course. Will my version be the one out there that that, that you will hear, or will you try it yourself and go, well, darn, he was right. Uh, those instructions are also on my, my website. If you go to my viralmediaart.com website, you can see how to set it up. All the cues are listed for the traditional version. Uh, and you can actually let it run and, and try it yourself. And you actually, there's some real gratification in that. I mentioned that when we all started our sync at the same time. That was really amazing. And, and so you can do that same thing. And it's something fun about setting this chain of motion, you know, in, 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 in motion there with it and, and being able to go, wow, nothing's really changed. Uh, it's fun to do. So who knows what will happen with my stuff. I make some of it available like I did tonight. Uh, uh, there's a group uh, based off of my, uh, my, my website, obviously, the Dark Side of Oz group and the Dark Side of Oz uh, uh, page. Feel free to contact me there. They're all links off my viral media art website. Uh, love to talk to anybody interested in this. And, and actually, uh, I'll be I'll be looking for another venue next year since I've had it at the Mystic Theater. I had Zodiacs last year. This year, it's at Aubergine's in Sebastopol. Uh, that's August 12th. And by the way, it's August 12th because August 12th, 15th, and 18th are the original dates of the original release of The Wizard of Oz. And that's one more reason to have it be a tribute or, or you know, a celebration be when I do it on one of those days. So there's one more of those little teacher scapegoats I built into my routine. Will there Just be? Make sure everybody knows. <laughs> will there be a live stage show this year? You know, as as live as my stage shows get. Yes, I, I like to think it's a classroom. You know, but, but things happen in my classroom sometimes that might not. And and granted, I, I do kind of kind of steal, beg, and borrow my character of the professor from the professor in the wall. So without saying too much about that, my, my, my show is called Somewhere Over the Wall this year. That will be a little bit of a clue about what I've discovered for the center of my entire Dark Side of Oz. Um, nobody has seen this yet. It's really fun. Uh, I, I granted a few people saw it tonight on the reveal, but that was only a small section of what I'm talking about. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to, uh, to actually bringing this out in public. I bring out a large 10x10 10 10 video screen, a really, really nice, huge, high-tech projector from Mark Latimer who provides my AV uh, work. He's awesome. And I've got a popcorn machine. You know, I'm a dangerous man. Will there be flying monkeys? There's always flying monkeys. You know, I, I, I hope they fly as good as last year. I had a lot of fun doing that last year. I, I built monkeys on on rubber bands, and as the monkeys flew, you recall, uh, uh, I, the monkeys flew all around the room. And actually, when the show was over that night, I, I had the owners up there throwing the monkeys around. They had a lot of fun with it after hours. So we won't even say more about that. But well, <laughs> Professor, monkeys will fly. How, how has synchronicity increased in your life since you've been involved with this? Wow. Uh, yeah, that's... Well, it's it's amazing when you when you start to think of things in circular and around as as things molecularly molecularly are, it, it things make sense when they repeat. And if you can start recognizing these repetitions in your life, I mean, obviously we go through the same things daily. 
and start noticing these little things. Now, I, I noted tonight, just in my own thought earlier, about, about us having this conversation on the same night that I put out this large synchronistic statement into the world, you know. Um, that's amazing stuff. Now, we just did something, you know. We just, we just bounced a beam back and forth, and here we are. That's amazing stuff. And, and if, I can, if I can create something new every day that wasn't there the day before, that's, that's my goal in my day right there. Well, you can subscribe and see the creativity of the professor in his uh, quite hilarious music <laughs> syncs. We, we try to have fun with that. I'm trying to be educational, but at the same time, that only goes so far. I, I, don't, want, I don't want to let schooling get, get involved too much over your education. You know what I mean? That's true. No, I don't either. Well, thank you so much, Professor. I'm looking it, forward it's been my to. Pleasure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the um, next class on the twelfth. Will I be seeing you? Will I be seeing you in class? I believe I will. Row? I believe I will be around. Yes. I ho- I'm, yeah. I'm hoping to see our, our co-student Bodhi there as well. So I'll, yes. I'll message him as well. Right. Okay. Well, Viral Media Art is your website. And um, you can explore the dark side of Oz and these incredible and fun music syncs. Thank you so much. I appreciate your, your help tonight. You're a great student. Matter of fact, you are now my assistant teacher. Thank you. My, my nose is getting browner by the moment. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that. Okay. Thank you, Professor. My pleasure. All the best. My pleasure.